Camara driving. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Coachman. Well, it is just the perfect time of year for a trip to the Carolinas, and that's where we find ourselves at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Tonight, we start week 14 with a great Thursday night matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by the NFL's most valuable player from 2015. It's Cam Newton. I know we were assigned this game, but let's face it. This is the one we wanted, isn't it? A chance to watch an MVP candidate perform down the stretches four weeks ago. How are you feeling about his chances? Well, I think he certainly has a shot. It's going to determine what he does and what the others around him do for these last four weeks. But more MVP chatter, it seems like, every year as you hit the month of December. This year's going to be no exception. Yeah, I know he's not ranked number one right now, but if he plays up to his capabilities, I think he's going to win with that. On second and nine, Newton. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they've played well against the pass, currently ranked seventh in the NFL. Yeah, defending the pass hasn't been an issue for them. It's been stopping the run. And if they don't stop the run, they can't get back to their strength, which is guarding against the air attack. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Okay, look at this. The punt team nowhere to be found. They're on the sidelines. Offense going to go for this on the opening drive. They are going to go for it. It's Newton. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A fourth down, no problem. 19 yards that time, but now it's first and 10. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Newton throwing again. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 23 yards, the final tally. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to... And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. As his guys are in for six. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. With these Thursday night games, sometimes you get those quick turnarounds. You wonder how a team is going to start. They started really well. Everyone's always wondering, going into a Thursday night game, who has their legs, who has a, you know the overall health of a team. But mentally, if you get that early edge, the other team might think to itself, ah, oh, it's been a short week. We're not really ready to go. You might run them into the ground that way. That's why getting that early score means a lot. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Let's go, D. Big series right here. We got to step it up. Throwing on first down. Herbert. Oh, he's going to take a shot. And got his man complete. It's a gain of 34. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc up. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. We call that sack look. And that sack certainly just strengthening his candidacy for defensive player of the year. You think he's got that one in the bag yet? I'm not willing to vote quite yet just because I want to wait till the season's over. But he is really tracking towards it. Just look at all the... And the pressure gets to him again. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game. And now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. 
Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He's going to sling this deep downfield and unable to connect. Incomplete. Uh, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And just not a ton of room to work with. He'll get it to the 15 for a gain of two. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And not a whole lot to speak of there as he'll bring him down shy of the 20. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Brandon, their last miss on third down, they actually were able to alleviate it because they picked it up with a fourth down conversion. I don't know that they'd be wise to try and do that again here. To me, you got to put the ball away. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. First down, Herbert, blitz coming, and down he goes. Brian Burns in there yet again. What else is new? He continues to rewrite the record book in single-season sacks. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to drop something good here on third and 13. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. And they should be set up for a big game. They have one of the hottest offenses in the league. They're coming in riding a winning streak. But we've seen these quick turnaround games. Real pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Brian Burns able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. But hang on, a flag is down. Now, if it's on the defense, they might decline it and take the points. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brian Burns in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Here's Kamara off the draw, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That second down play nets a minus four. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Six nothing, our score after one. Throwing on third and long. Herbert under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Brian Burns. Make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. That'll be Frank, a silly penalty there, trying to block the field goal, and that leads to a fresh set of downs. Following the penalty, it's Kamara. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. 
54 is Meyer, 54 is Meyer. Check, check, watch 54, watch 54. On second down, Kamara. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Back to back stops, make it third and ten. To throw on third down, Herbert. And he finds Cook. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Jared Cook. His fifth touchdown now on the year. As his guys can now take the lead with the extra point. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This will be fielded at the six. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Panthers have the first. It's a gain of 12. Newton on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. It's the linebacker, Alex Anzalone, that he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Let's go now. Blue draw perfect. 60 yards. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. To throw on second down. Herbert, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brian Burns, my goodness, make that now five sacks for him in this ball game. Really, really turning in an incredible performance. On third down, Herbert, oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. 
Now a first down throw for Newton. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Man, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. To throw once more on second and 10. Newton, he's going to look. This is caught at the 20. And he'll be down deep into New Orleans territory. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this week. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Trey Hendrickson able to record his fifth sack of the season to try again after the sack. Newton, and this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Newton now to throw. That is caught at the seven. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and, and he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Christian McCaffrey hitting double digits with his tenth touchdown of the season. And the Panthers are going to jump back in front. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Looking to throw. Herbert under pressure again, and down he goes again. Brian Burns in there for the seventh time in this game alone, and that ties him with the late Derek Thomas for the most sacks ever in a single game. Not wanting to risk another sack, they'll play it safe with a run. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. Well, who needs a halftime? Am I right? Let's resume play. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. And he's going to go down again. Now, that's the way to start the second half. Back-to-back -back sacks. Whatever the halftime speech was, I hope they recorded it. Now, on third and long, they'll look to throw. 
He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17, but even with that, they'll be well short here for fourth down. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. And that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain, still a ways to go, though. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Jordan, what a season he continues to have. His 15th sack of the campaign. After the sack on first down, Newton, and that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. But nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Eight, eight. Watch twist. Second and ten, Newton again. And they get to Newton and take him down for the sack. Cameron Jordan, he continues to wreak havoc in the offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. Third and long, it's Newton. A fight for the football and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jamario Davis. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Throwing to start the drive. Herbert, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brian Burns in there yet again. They just cannot block him. He now has eight sacks, and that is a new single-game record. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Back to throw. Herbert, open man is Hill. He's got it. That catch good for five. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means other guys on his team helped him out a lot. They occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation, allows him to get home. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Back to the air, Newton on second down. And his pass incomplete. He was looking to get that one to DJ Moore. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And now it's third down. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he's got his target. That's Moore. And they're going to have. 
this across midfield and inside the 45. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Newton now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Newton's pass is on target to Moore. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. On first down, it's Newton. And he's got it. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A good pick up there, 21 yards. To the air again, Newton. And that will be caught by Moore. He's got a Panthers touchdown. D.J. Moore with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the Panthers. review of the play, the ruling on the field. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. Throwing again is Newton. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. So they elect to pass there on the two-point try. Sometimes can prove risky there at worked out. Yeah, and I love how you bring up that it can prove risky because if you get it intercepted and they return it, that's two points for the defense, but not on that play. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Let's go, back. back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite offense. surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. Looking to throw. Herbert. Rush coming, and he's taken down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because and he's going to be taken down. They sack him on what will be the final play of quarter number three. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. On third down, here's Kamara. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak. Not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. They go for it on fourth and goal, but that winds up incomplete. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that drop. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. D.J. Moore with another touchdown, number 24 on the year. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guy, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brian Burns 
Leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Second and long. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he takes it into the end zone. It's a fumble recovery and a touchdown for the Panthers. They give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. The lefty Tavecchio now to add the extra point. Now these have been no picnic for him so far. He's missed two, but this one is good. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. And I tell you, four weeks still to go and every nowhere to go. Here he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Looking to throw on second down. Herbert in trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. And he goes down, it's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. With it is Jackson. And, oh, they had him bottled up, but here's a late flag, and a face mask is going to get a much better starting position. Defense. the fourth and that personal foul penalty is not going to help no in these types of situations players will tell you that's extra intensity from where we sit it's actually frustration not a good play so the face mask gets him a free 15 to start the drive now newton and look at this cam newton intercepted a third time Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in season December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. That right now. That's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now. Because he'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Brian Burns 
The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Camara, and it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. But in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much. But I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been out played all game long. But like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make Come yourself on, respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A well-executed 22-yard game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Newton out of throw. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership <laughs> that as he tries to negotiate a new contract <laughs> off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together, try to set up the screen, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl to Luke Kinkley that picks it. And he will score. Touchdown, Panthers. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what do you do when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? And he said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> you like being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across Let's the go. 25. Let's go. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Back to throw. Herbert, this is complete to Michael Thomas. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Throwing on third and long. Herbert, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at the 18. A 
tremendous return there, 39 yards. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. here down the stretch two picks now in the fourth quarter trying to hang on to that lead talk about keeping someone in the game instead of being able to shut the door it's still cracked open because they can come back on you now but people are really happy about those picks any fantasy team that has this defense defense So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. They go play action here on first down. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory and the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for Carolina, the win is number nine for them on the year. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they can ill afford to drop too many more as they fall to seven and six on the year. And they'll try to get back on the beam next week as they'll head to Tampa to take on the Bucks.
like that. Like that. It's a lot of money. Why are you mad like that? Like that. Ooh, ooh, I'm in my new bag. My bag. You ain't get. You ain't get. Too bad. My bag. Yeah. Uh, first of the month.